Hey y'all, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and today we're gonna get to pruning up my Schaflera. It is a root over lava rock from the islands of Hawaii, uh, one of the states here in the United States of America, way west of the west coast, and I'm way out in the northeast coast. So uh, a friend brought it back for me maybe four or five years ago. It was a very thin Schaflera. It was probably a cutting with very fine root system that um, was growing into a lava rock. And, you know, all the little um, holes and textures of the lava rock really make it awesome for uh, roots to attach to. So over the years, it has wrapped around that. And I have, I'd say, medium to coarse uh, lava rock uh, bonsai sediment that it's also sitting in inside of a small uh, acacia pot. There's no drainage hole, nothing like that. It's done fine with having no drainage holes and I just fill it with water kind of like my um, my bamboo pots. And hey Carl and uh, you know it grows back and I've had this plan to somehow mount that lava rock onto kind of like screw through the lava rock and put it like it's on the side of a cliff um, for the visual effect but I didn't do anything uh, necessary to get, get that progressed and into its next potting. So what we're gonna do today is we'll probably give it a very hard pruning um, because I've just let it grow wildly. It's getting leggy as hell. And even though it's not in its permanent pot, uh, it just, it looks stupid. It's off balance and uh, it needs some love. Plus, I should be able to get some nice cuttings out of it after leaving them for so long. So, uh, Dwarf Schaflera, Dwarf Umbrella plant, Umbrella tree. Yeah. So that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. All right, Chelsea, here we go. So... It's actually getting like whitish gray up top and I'm wondering if these top roots, as I smack myself in the face with the Schifflera, I'm wondering if these top roots are actually dead and it's gonna turn into like some sort of dead wood cool feature in the future. Um, but you see the little acacia pot, it's cute. It's just not well suited for this. And even though the roots themselves are very attractive, it looks like a hand gripping into the soil. Well, not this freakish hand. This one I've broken so many times, but a normal hand gripping into the soil. So I just thought something like that. I don't know, something on an angle, maybe do it the opposite way with the hand facing down. Something on a nice feature, probably screw right through the lava rock with like a three inch um, exterior wood screw or something like that. Something that can lock in nice. Uh, probably do like the um, the dull ones, nothing shiny, and throw a couple screws in there and mount it. But I don't know if it's because we had a baby, or I just haven't thought about it because it was summer and it was outside and it's just like water and grow at that point. But I just didn't get to it, so. This is, I guess, an incomplete video because I think the last time I worked with this tree, I said, all right, next time I work with this tree, we're going to repot it. And everybody was like, uh, yes, that's the worst pot for it of all time. And you got to do something. Especially my broski, Colin at Boston Bonsai, idiot. This Heineken's for you, bro. He was disgusted with the pot choice. Oh, no, nah, I'm <laughs> just playing. It's all in good fun. That's the beauty of the Bonsai Network. We're all pretty chill. Made a lot of good friends. Uh, and if you didn't catch my last couple of videos, and we normally converse on Instagram or text or whatever, and I've been out of touch, I literally just got a new phone. And so I'm back up and running, catching up on stuff. And um, we just got back from New York City today. So this is Saturday. And we took Stella into the city. We met up with Franny and we got her, her new iPhone 14. Got that all set up. Poor Laura, my wife, she uh, she's dealt with customer service. 
hours and hours with Verizon, and then hours and hours with T-Mobile. And finally, I believe she and we are done. I'm just happy to uh, pay for it and get those special veteran rates, <laughs> but you don't want me dealing with customer service. It doesn't go well. All right, enough talking. See, this is what happens when I get a new phone. I have too much room just to talk. So these are the little nubs here. Dead nubs from the last time because, you know, with most trees, you want to leave just a little room for where you prune for it to die back. Uh, and if you're new to growing things, you know what I'm talking about with die back. So say um, I didn't say I pruned this specifically to uh, the trunk line when I first pruned it. The die back could leak into like the main branch here, and then you would lose both these branches eventually. So you always want to leave a little bit of room. Uh, when you first prune it so it's not the prettiest it's not the cleanest you just can't overthink it um, and then once that dies back a little bit the next time you go to prune you could uh, take it off but even here there's a little there's some wet green flesh <laughs> uh, so <laughs> anyways I'm just laughing because when I say things like that my daughter Franny absolutely cringes she's like Ugh, it's so gross or when we're on the phone FaceTiming from New York and I'm walking around checking on the plants and I'll do things like this. She's like, oh, can you stop petting your plants? Like, I don't know if it's a textural thing or she just likes to bust my chops because she's a teenager, but uh, it makes me laugh every time. So I kind of instigate it. All right. So I, I think I like this branch originally as a nice feature. And then it might have just stayed on like to thicken the trunk here, but I just don't, I mean, I know it needs to get pruned back because it's so friggin' long, but I don't know if it's actually affecting the overall like picture, like maybe that looked better. Stella's looking out the sliding glass door at me like, why aren't I out there with you? Hi, baby. She learned how to blow kisses, except she does the kiss, and then she'll go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, kids are the best. All right, so I haven't had any successful aerial roots, and uh, if you're watching this and you're going, how can I get aerial roots? Why doesn't this guy have aerial roots? Well, quite simply, I take the time to water all of my trees but I don't walk around daily missing them. I probably have the time. I just don't allocate that much time to like, you know, doing those little persnickety things. So as long as the tree's healthy and happy, I'm, I'm not overstressing it. I was hoping that by the time I got done talking, I would figure out if I wanted to take this thing all the way off or maybe just take it back to here. I'll probably take it back to here this time. Since we're not repotting, there's no sense in doing like the mega setup for the future so like I said I'm gonna leave about three quarters of an inch for die back and this should actually be a nice cutting got a little branch coming out low starting to kind of get woody so that'll be a good one so I have a bunch of jades that I did yesterday. So if you missed that video, go ahead, pop back and check out the, the jade pruning. But essentially the same thing. I'm going to treat it, you know, as a typical succulent. Let it dry out for a few days. Then throw it in some nice airy light soil that uh, drains well and doesn't say, stay too moist. Because these will kind of, um, they'll rot, you know, essentially. These money trees, jades, things like that. You know, they need water, but... You know at the right times if there's no roots you know why do they need to be sitting in water so uh, it's not like a willow or uh, or a bamboo where it'll just kick off roots sitting in water this will actually just rot all right cool so I think 
we could probably all be in agreement that this branch is terrible, but there are some tiny little green nodes coming out down low. So maybe next time I come down here, I'll be able to prune that there and get everything mega short and, uh, and, and start from scratch to get some uh, lower branching going on, lower division. This one kind of got leggy and they grow so slowly in the beginning, especially when they don't have established root systems that, I don't know, for me, I, I just kind of let them go more than normal. So I had, I had left this little branch on here for weeks. I noticed it had yellowed up and I was going to show you how, you know, the yellow up doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing something wrong with your tree, transition of seasons and all that. And then Stella was just out here and she was like smacking the tree all over the place and knocked all the yellow leaves off. So at least I remember to talk about it. So why don't we be a little drastic here? Just take it down. Let's make some nice cuttings. Um, I, you know, I never know with these. You typically prune back to a node so that you know what direction it's going to kick off some growth. And you typically want it to go outwards, not in towards the trunk. So you want to prune to an outward facing bud. But with these, I, I can't necessarily tell whether it's a bud or, you know, an attempt at an aerial root. So it's like the greenest of green right here. I'm thinking that's a bud. I want to go a little shorter. Uh, you know, I'll just err on the side of caution. Ah, screw it. Let's go. There's a little bump there. Boom, boom. It'll be fine. It's all going to be okay, people. Maybe I'll do a little Shaflera Forest, because these are some serious cuttings. And we're just rolling with it. Following suit, same type of height. I don't know if you've ever had a drive in to New York City, but I take the path of least resistance, but it's still rough. This is why typically if I pick up or drop Franny off, we do it at like 3 a.m. and then I'm home before 7 because there's no one on the road. But like today, I don't know, we left around, I'd say like 11 something. And it was just bumper to bumper, like the first hour and a half getting home. And then I start speeding when I can actually get some room and I get in trouble with Laura. Cousins out there unite, you understand. All right, so I got this nice healthy bud right here going straight up. So since this, I guess, is technically the apex, even though there's nothing like directly vertical up, I'm going to aim for that. Be the new leader. Boom. I left like, I don't know, a third of an inch just because I wanted the longer cutting. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, so maybe I'll do two different plantings of three, and I'll angle them all gnarly and stuff, you know, when you you see the palm trees on the beach, when you travel to like uh, Mexico or somewhere in the Caribbean, everything's going a different direction, growing crazy, reaching for the sun, those are my favorite, so this actually could be a little, a lot of fun. So what I'll probably do is let these dry out a few days, catch some motivation this week, and get myself a pot to do this bad boy. And then we can uh, we can pot up two plantings of three, and then screw this into something cool. So I have a triple division right here, almost quadruple division nearly from the same spot so I might have to address that in the future maybe take out one or two of them but you know early on you just want as much potential for branching as possible so yeah that's gonna be it for that so let me bring you in for a little zoom in ski
can't even tell you how awesome it is to not have to worry about my phone shutting off and focusing and running out of space. So much better. So yeah, there is the gnarly hand. I definitely I pruned this one. Last time I repotted, I pruned this one and this one to let you know these go out because this was coming up. And I think it might have killed them. It's got some awesome gnarly texture. This right here, that's like uh, that's calcium or some sort of sediment growing, but that's a lava rock. So when it started, it was just this little stick straight up and a tiny little canopy. I don't know. It's going to be fun to play with once we actually find the right pot. Maybe not even a pot. Maybe a rock with a nice little uh, divot in it. I could kind of fold the roots into so it gets some uh, soil and it will maintain some moisture. <clears throat> it's like these are low maintenance and extremely high maintenance at the same time. I've had some rot on me and just die off and Got a good bone, Millie? These guys. Millie, Bruce Lee. <laughs> they absolutely freak out when they leave the house because they're my service dogs, but you don't want to bring them to New York City because Millie will just bite everybody. Bruce will pee on something, pee on everything, and hump any dog he passes. You know what? I don't always drink beer, but when I do a Heineken, it's just so delicious. So, I think that's going to do it for today. I hope you all have a great weekend. I'm Jared Paul from The Ranch, and from my family to yours, cheers.